YouTube, what's the deal? Cass Monitor is back with some more content. Make sure y'all continue to comment, like, and subscribe. I appreciate y'all. So yeah, let's jump straight into it. You guys already know what this video is gonna be about. It's gonna be about August Monitor diet. You don't have to have an August Monitor um, to relate to this. You can apply this information to whatever species you have, you know, whatever carnivorous reptile you may have. So before I talk about what I do feed, I wanna talk about a few things that I don't feed and why okay so i don't feed organ or flesh meats what i mean by organ meats is chicken liver chicken gizzards uh chicken heart chicken kidneys um you know uh any red meat any beef or steak ground turkey um uh, ground beef um uh, chicken breasts i don't feed these food items number one because organ meats are high in phosphorus very very high in phosphorus there's no nutrients in them there's no calcium in it you know a lot of people think just because um you know monitor lizards are carnivores um by nature that feeding high amounts of flesh items is it's, it's a good thing but it's not because you know truth be told monitor lizards cannot process and digest high amounts of flesh on a consistent basis they their body just can't break it down so if you do decide to feed any organs, any organ meat or flesh meats, you should feed it as a treat. Um, it shouldn't be, um, you know, the foundation of your animal's diet. You shouldn't be feeding this um, at high volumes. I wouldn't advise it because, like I said, these animals can't process it. Not, not to mention, um, you know, your animal can, can, you know, start to develop the, a bunch of different health issues from obesity, from gout, you know, from... You know just a lot of different things because you know these animals are not wired to just eat flesh all day every day you know in a while yeah we we see them eating on different carcasses different um prey items and things like that but they're not just eating flesh they're eating the bones they're eating the tendons the cartilage the skin you know the brain and the eyeballs you know they're they're getting all the good nutrients and calcium on top of that you know um and that's exactly what whole prey is and why whole prey is so important you know so now that we're talking about whole prey you guys know that i do feed rodents rats chicks i mean not chicks rats and mice um and on top of that avians i do feed quail and chicks um but when it comes to whole prey whole prey whole prey is everything you know um to be honest a lot of people stare away from whole prey you'll hear a lot of people say oh, okay whole prey it's too expensive, rodents are too pricey, you know, and things like that. But I mean, there's no getting, there's no getting, a, getting uh, uh, around that. You know, if anything, whole prey is going to continue to go up because the hobby is is growing, so it's a high demand for rodents, you know. But uh, whole prey is everything. In the wild, these these animals may not be eating as much rats or mice, or may not have the access that we think they have or don't have to rats and mice but in captivity this is the best option for us keepers you know what i'm saying because like i said we can give our animals everything they need in one food item like i said the bones the tendons the cartilage the, you know all that good stuff all that good stuff the skin uh the bones for calcium you know to help those uh to help um you know with bone growth and you know not just bone growth but you know your animals overall growth so whole prey is very important um another thing i hear about whole prey a lot of people complain about is the how fatty rats are rats and mice and i mean i can agree with that to a certain extent um yes rodents do have a high content of fat but at the end of the day that's what being a disciplined and a um a disciplined keeper and uh, a, a responsible keeper you know it's all about feeding responsible food volumes when it comes to anything you're feeding your animal you never want to overdo it or go overboard especially with whole prey you know uh, so you just got to be responsible you know don't feed high vibes of whole prey you know switch your diet up make sure it's variety um, Charmander gets man everything you know from fish crawfish shrimp mussels clams on top of whole prey and on top of chicks and birds you know he has a variety diet and that's 
that's what really counts and that's what matters. It's all about creating a balance when it comes to being a reptile keeper, especially when it comes to monitor lizards. You have to have that balance. You know, you can't just feed um, nothing but organ and flesh meats to your animal, animal because, you know, it'll fail. And it's the same thing for whole prey. I'm not just going to big whole prey up because there are some, you know, some, uh, some cons when it comes to whole prey. You know, if you're feeding too much of it, then your animal will fail as well. You know, it'll get obese and start to develop, you know, a, a, a bunch of um, different health issues. So it's just all about creating that balance. It's all about being a responsible keeper. And it's all about discipline as well. You know, you got to have that balance as a keeper. Um, so, yeah, we covered whole prayer. We covered organ meats and flesh meats. Um, I don't want to make this video too long, but I just wanted to share this because I hear a lot of arguments on both sides. I hear a lot of people talking down on whole prey. I hear a lot of people bigging up um, chicken liver and chicken hearts and, and, and different flesh items. You know, I, I hear the arguments on both sides, but I mean, the information is out there. You can fact check it. Um, like I always say, do your due diligence, do your research. Um, and, and, and never cut your animals short. You know what I'm saying? Another reason why I don't feed organ and flesh meats is, to be honest, it's, it's bottom of the barrel food. It's basically scraps. You know, um, yeah, it's cheap, but I mean, you know, house, housing these animals, it's, it's, it's all about longevity. You know, what you put into your animal is what you're going to get out of your animal long term. You know what I'm saying? It's just like a, 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 a regular person, you know, or athlete. You know, if an athlete's eating nothing but donuts and fried food and things like that over time, you know, he's going to fail. So it's the same thing for these reptiles. We got to make sure that we're creating a balance. We got to make sure that we're disciplined and we got to make sure we're not just following trends or getting lazy or anything like that. We gotta always make sure to put our best foot forward uh, when it comes to keeping these carnivorous reptiles because it's a blessing to have an exotic animal. We all know about these bans that's going on um, and all these different laws in certain states. So it's like, you know, we got these animals, so go, you know, above and beyond for them. You know, so uh, yeah, make sure you create that balance make sure you don't overdo it make sure you're feeding responsible values at all times um so yeah i'm gonna leave that video with y'all uh, i appreciate y'all make sure y'all continue to comment like and subscribe thank y'all peace